former Colts head coach Frank Reich just became the new head coach of the Carolina Panthers. And this fires me up. There's a major storyline behind Frank Reich that a lot of people don't know. Uh, but we're going to talk about it, specifically with Derek Carr. And this can impact the Raiders' value and what the Raiders may get for a guy like Derek Carr. You know, Frank Reich was the, the coach of the Colts at one point, And the Colts ended up trading for Matt Ryan. But before they traded for Matt Ryan, apparently they offered two first-round picks to the Raiders for Derek Carr. Apparently, the Indianapolis Colts wanted Derek Carr prior to getting Matt Ryan just this past offseason. And they offer two first round picks for Derek Carr. Now, we don't know if the offer was correct, but uh, there's been other reports that the Colts were one of the teams that were interested in Derek Carr. Now, here's the interesting part. It wasn't the Colts owner that was interested in Derek Carr. It was the coach, Frank Reich. Frank Reich was the one that was interested in Derek Carr. He is the one that wanted Derek Carr. In fact, uh, just recently, we heard from uh, the Colts themselves that the Colts don't have interest in inquiring Derek Carr today, right? Today, Frank Reich's not there and the Colts are no longer interested, right? So that right there tells me that although the Raiders won't be able to trade with the Colts, the fact that Frank Reich just got hired by the Carolina Panthers, there's a window of opportunity for the Raiders to potentially send Carr to the Panthers because the Panthers don't have a quarterback. In fact, in my opinion, the thing that's held the Panthers back uh, this past season was their quarterback. The Panthers have a good young offensive line. They have a good young defensive line, a good secondary. They have what it takes to win. They just need a quarterback. I don't know if Derek Carr is going to be that quarterback, but I do know he at least gives you that hope. He at least gives you that opportunity because outside of Derek Carr with the number nine overall pick, which is what the Panthers hold, you don't have a lot of options. So for me, I think the best case scenario for this team is going to be for them to trade for Derek Carr. Now, they do hold, hold the ninth overall pick. I personally don't think Derek Carr goes for the ninth overall pick. I think Derek Carr is going to either go for a second or a third round pick. Uh, in the past, oftentimes, I said Derek Carr's contract's not very favorable. And technically, $40 million isn't very favorable. But to get out of his contract is pretty easy for any team, right? So if you trade for Derek Carr right now, you're not stuck with his three years. You're really just stuck with him for at least one year. Which, of course, if you trade for him, you're going to keep him for at least one year. Uh, so I think a team like the Panthers could make sense. Kind of interesting. Uh, now, for the Raiders, of course, we don't have a quarterback either. Uh, PFF did this thing where they said, uh, who are the best team fits for the top quarterbacks in the 2023 NFL Draft? And for the Raiders, apparently Will Levis is the best fit for the Raiders. And that's kind of interesting. Um, I've been very open about Will Levis. I'm not the biggest fan of him, but I will also state this. You know, any quarterback can have success once they get into the league. I think the biggest factor for a quarterback to have success is going to be his environment around him, right? Uh, Trevor Lawrence is a great example of that. Um, before they hired Doug Peterson, his coaching staff was very inconsistent and he had a lot of failures, right? His rookie year, he didn't look the same type of quarterback that he looked this year with Peterson. He looked like a much better quarterback so in my opinion a quarterback success oftentimes comes from the coach now obviously a quarterback has to be willing to do what they're being asked to of the coach right an example would be if a coach is saying hey we're gonna run a play action we need you to get out of the pocket we need you to run with the football or if a quarterback doesn't have the the speed to get out of the pocket the speed to avoid um, a defensive end and run away from these guys the system's not going to work because of the limitations of the quarterback now well, Levis could have success if the Raiders wanted to draft him, bring him in, and put him in the right scenario. Um, in my opinion, the Raiders have Devontae Adams. We have Darren Waller. We have Josh Jacobs. We have Hunter Renfro, although we may move on from one of those guys. More on that a little bit later on. Um, the Raiders still have a good group, a good core for any rookie quarterback. Like, arguably, if you're a rookie quarterback, you want to go to the Raiders, right? That is the job you want now. Um, because of the fact that you have all these weapons, it might make sense, right? Now, for Levis, PFF did say, say that uh, in come Le Levis, a quarterback with all the tools you could want from a young gunslinger, Levis wasn't in the best situation to showcase as a passer at Kentucky this past season due to limited weapons in the passing game. Of course, that won't be a problem with the Raiders because of all the guys we have. Um, they do go on to say Levis will need some time to develop, but so will rest of the Raiders roster, offensive line, and defense 
to get back to playoff aspirations. In the meantime, he can learn the ways of the pros with a good supporting cast. Here's the thing. Um, I don't think the Raiders will draft Will Levis and say we're going to wait two years because Devontae Adams' contract is two years, right? Unless we pick up the last two years on his deal, Adams isn't going to be here long term, right? Uh, past two years, right? Um, which means the Raiders may want to go all in and try to win sooner rather than later. Uh, we've obviously heard the rumors of Tom Brady. In fact, we just went and picked up one of Tom Brady's former wide receivers, and we signed him to a future contract. So uh, say what you want about this transaction. I do think it kind of is interesting. You know, when you look at quarterbacks, and as quarterbacks go to a new um, a new team, right? Not new scheme, not new system. Tom obviously knows Josh McDaniels. But when Tom gets to the Raiders, if he were to come here, he wants guys that he can connect with, specifically guys outside the main guys, right? Tom Brady connecting with uh, Devontae Adams, Darren Waller should be straightforward. They're superstar players. But then when it comes to connecting with a guy like Keelan Cole, that takes time. That's why you replace guys like Keelan Cole, who is already not going to be here technically next year unless you bring him back. That's why a guy like Tyler Johnson could make sense. Tyler Johnson and Tom Brady have already played together for two years. They already have that connection, right? Johnson knows his, uh, on, the, on the sill concept, he knows exactly how to run it where Tom knows exactly how to throw it, right? So kind of interesting, just kind of think about it from that perspective. Um, nothing major, we'll see what ends up happening. I do like the Tyler Johnson pickup. I think he's a young guy that has a little bit of vertical speed, which the Raiders have missed. In other news, um, Raiders rookie Dylan Parham was named to PFWA's all-rookie team. Big shout out to Dylan Parham. You know, when the Raiders initially uh, picked him with their pick, I was fired up. Um, I felt like Parham has, uh, in terms of his game, he has a, a high IQ, right? He's smart. He knows how to reach. He knows how to do things in terms of his blocking angles. Of course, I was hesitant with the fit. The Raiders are a power football team. Parham isn't the strongest nor the biggest offensive lineman. And I wasn't sure how he's going to fit with the Raiders. But the more I watch of Dylan Parham, the more I feel like the Raiders brought him in to potentially be the future center. Um, and even if he's not the future center, remember, he was a third round pick, right? He's not a first round pick. He's not a top 10 pick in the second round. A third round pick's not a massive investment, right? Like, how many players have the Raiders picked that are third round picks who are like, backups, special teams players. They take four or five years to develop. Um, so again, with Dylan Parham being an all-rookie, right, there's only two guys named. In fact, I'll show you guys the list really quickly. Um, the two guys, uh, guards that got picked were guard Zion Johnson of the Los Angeles Chargers. He was my favorite guard, but do note, he was one of the first offensive linemen taken in last year's uh, draft class. And of course, Dylan Parham was the other guy. Um, so when you look at it from that perspective, right, as a third round pick, a guy getting selected to the all rookie team, that's a major accomplishment. Now, I'll be the first to tell you guys, um, you know, just putting my Raider bias to the side, Dylan Parham had a lot of struggles, a lot of struggles, right? Especially late in the season. I'd say in the last like eight weeks, Dylan Parham did not look good at so many different times. He was getting beat up on, he was getting bull rushed, he was getting swam around him and, and both of our guards, right? Um, bars as well didn't look all that good. But again, uh, did he deserve the all-rookie team? Maybe, maybe not, right? Some people are uh, upset. I know Patriots fans specifically that Cole Strange did not uh, get this award. Some Texans fans are upset that Kenny and Green did not get the award. Do know both of those guys are first-round picks. So just the fact that Dylan Parham is up there with those guys, that that's damn impressive if you guys ask me. Um, so shout out to Dylan Parham, man. Um, Let's get into some some interesting news at the at the end, man. Uh, this article here, uh, posted by Jeremy Fowler of ESPN, had some very interesting things kind of stated within the article. Um, in the article, Jeremy Fowler wrote that the Raiders will be looking to aggressively tweak their roster. Fowler wrote that basically because this is a new uh, coach, this is a new regime, they're going to look to change around guys that are on this roster because they want their own guys here. And I almost think that type of thinking is, I think it's stupid, to be honest, you guys. You know, uh, Darren Waller can line up against Derwin James and beat him, I'd say, 9 out of 10 times in a one-on-one -on -one situation, right? 
Um, and I would say that regardless of who his head coach is, that fact remains true. Darren Waller will beat Derwin James nine out of 10 times. He can run a nine route. He can run a four route, a seven route. He's going to beat him nine out of 10 times. It doesn't matter who his quarterback is. It doesn't matter who his offensive play caller is. It doesn't matter what concept is called. Darren Waller is a damn good football player. And it almost makes me think, why would the Raiders get rid of Darren Waller when he's a great football player? And my point in bringing up Darren Waller is that apparently Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro may be on the trade block, right? That's kind of what this article is implying. Again, why would the Raiders move on from a guy that's so explosive? Like, just because you bring in a new coach doesn't mean your best players get thrown to the side. Right, And if that was the case, why would they have re-signed Waller and Renfro? Why would they have already paid these guys? Now, again, I think the Hunter Renfro uh, signing was a mistake. I'll, I will continue to stay that, say that, and I will continue to stick with it. Um, not that he's not a good football player. I just think that he doesn't have the impact that a guy like Waller has, an impact that a guy that Josh Jacobs may have, right? Let's be honest. Because we paid Hunter Renfro, we may not be able to pay Josh Jacobs, right? Just keep that in mind. That's the only reason I say that. Not that I think Renfro's a bad football player. But again, apparently the Raiders are going to tweak their roster. I don't really know how I feel about this. Because if we're going to tweak our roster, the tweak to me would be that we're going to add some depth. We're going to add some Patriots type of players, right? The smart, high IQ football players. The guys that are coachable. The guys you can yell at and will take that criticism and show up the next day and play the next day. And... Those are the type of guys that you want. Those are the type of guys that win. Uh, but those are also the type of guys that are hard to get, right? The Raiders may draft the guy in the third round, and he may not work out because he's not coachable. And you may have to move on from that guy, right? In my opinion, that's okay. You just got to get your guys. And obviously, Josh McDaniels has this year to prove himself, right? Uh, let's be honest. We're going to give him four weeks before the criticism starts to come. If you're 4 no, great. You got another four to six weeks. If you're two and two, you're gonna be you know we're gonna be on on alert. Uh, if you're one and three or zero oh and four, we're gonna be calling to for you to be fired. Um, so I don't know how much they're gonna tweak this roster, but I do know that they gotta get it done this year. Uh, no excuses for Josh Daniels and Dave Ziegler. The Raiders are apparently aggressively looking to tweak their roster. Let's see what they do, man. Let's get some guards. Let's get some tackles. Let's get some defensive players, some interior defensive players. Let's get some linebackers, man. I'm fired up. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.